Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we are at, maybe you guessed it, Milwaukee for Pipeline 2022. Pipeline is their new NPS, new product symposium. We're going to get first look at some of their newest tool innovations that are going to be coming. I love tools. I'm super excited. Hopefully you guys are as excited as well, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's Dude, we're locked out. So that's kind of embarrassing. Let's go. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yo, this is my favorite social media influencer. Oh, old, give me a break. Old, You're old, the best old, influencer, old, old dude. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> that's the man right there. It's been a long time since we've done this. Thanks, COVID. But look at this. All these people are here. We've got a lot of new tools that hopefully they're going to be showing us. Let me know down below in the comments what's the number one tool that you really want to see from Milwaukee. But we're going to get started in two minutes, 40 some seconds. So let's get into it. We, we just got done with a nice spiel from uh, presidents and vice presidents here at Milwaukee, but we're headed back to our first session, which is carpentry and remodeling. And I think we're going to see, oh, don't show it. Don't show it yet. Don't show it yet. I think we're going to see something that we've all wanted to see. Let's go. Let's go. It's real. There it is. Call it the blade lock. If you flip this up, what it allows you to do is just push forward on the handle and it locks into place to open this, oh, okay. get your access here, right? You change your blade, your like push button lock for the arbor lock is right here. Yep. And then when you're done, all you have to do is flip this back down and it releases the head and you're back into to working okay. on yourself. This is going to work on a Makita no, or a yeah. Fest tool. Makita Fest tool track. Yep. All should be interchangeable symmetry after you got the scoring lock. Yep, scoring Here's, lock. That's your scoring lock. You've got your micro adjust. So that's oh. like if you need to, like this little dial essentially is what allows you to dial in the depth setting. So if you need a little bit more, a little bit less, you can just adjust, oh. adjust this dial to get a little, little bit extra. We've got uh, 45 degree, we got 22 and a half degree stops. We got 45 degree stop. We can also go past 45. We got this little trigger here. So if we want to go past 45, and then also we can go below zero and go to negative one. Uh, that's always good if you're scribing something tight. Uh, and also you can put your stop here at 22 and a half, and then we're gonna stop right at 22 and a half. Also, you'll notice here the track saw is not coming off the track. And I'll show you something. Let me tighten this guy up real quick. So you got this guy right here. You can push and turn, and that's going to release it. But if you push and turn it back, it's going to keep it locked down so you're not going to flop over your material. So it's a nice safety thing. So obviously, super, super pumped uh, for Milwaukee to finally come to the market with a track saw. I'm always okay with not being the first to market because honestly, usually the first to market is probably going to find out what everybody doesn't like and everybody's going to let you know about it. So I think Milwaukee was smart, kind of letting the other brands come out with their cordless track saws, see where the pain points were, see what people did and didn't like. And it seems like this is exactly what I would have expected, what I would have wanted. There's some other cool features. You've got this micro adjustment. So imagine you're trying to cut through like some deck boards and you don't want to cut into your seal tape that's covering your joist. If you want to be precise, you can actually set your, um, set your depth and then you can micro adjust this in and out, making sure that you only go as deep as you need to go. Not always going to be needed in rough framing. We've got adjustable speeds. Everything that you would expect to have in a track saw, it's very comfortable on the way that it 
it rocks forward and does the plunge. You've got your different markings for you know where you're gonna make your full depth cuts when you plunge. So just very, very happy that Milwaukee finally came out with this. And take a look at this. So this is gonna be available as a tool only, but also as a pack out kit, place for your batteries, your blades, your dust collection bag, and obviously your saw all in a pack out. I love that. I love the ability to get your track saw from point A to point B, uh, from the job site to the trailer. Uh, and it worked great with dust collection. So they're claiming 90% dust collection. I don't know how to quantify that. I do know that there was no issue with dust collection here in this, you know, where we're at right now. We'll get this, we'll get all these tools on site for sure and let you guys know what we really think. But obviously just super excited. This was the highlight of the show for us uh, to see the track saw finally come to the market. 20 millimeter arbor, that's gonna be your kind of common six and a half track saw blade. And that's for a purpose. I didn't really understand that, but they said that's because the blade does matter on the type of, uh, uh, on your saw. So you don't wanna just use a, re a regular framing blade. I know that would be cheaper, but uh, these blades are about $39. You can actually use this on your Festool, your Makita tracks. Uh, so that's awesome. If you've already got those, you don't have to buy new ones. If you do, uh, their tracks range from, I think that's like a 30-incher uh, up to a full, you can rip down a 4 by 8 sheet long ways, 99 to 249 range on the tracks. The saw itself, you can get a bare tool saw for $399, or if you want it in the pack-out kit, that's going to be $549. Um, so there you go. All right, so check it out. I did not expect this to be coming from Milwaukee uh, today. It's a cordless belt sander. They're claiming, obviously, a more power than an 8 amp corded version of a belt sander. And I don't use belt sanders often. It's one of those tools that when you, when you need it and you got it, you're happy. Uh, scribing things in is obviously essential to have a belt sander, I think. And this thing is, is extremely smooth. We've got multiple LEDs so you can see where you're obviously going to be working. Easy belt change like you would expect. So that's no big deal. You can adjust it while you're running here, just like every other belt sander. We've got great dust collection. Oh, this is kind of a cool feature. So when you want to get into your really close locations, you can put the handle back and you can work all the way into a wall. But for better stability, more control, you bring that sucker right back out. And I know you want to see it, so here we go. This is just some uh, butcher block. It's got a nice trigger lock, obviously. So look how quickly that just ate right into that. Now, maybe you don't want to go that fast. It does have an adjustable speed. So if you really want to just kind of, you know, work into it, you can adjust the speed. Really cool tool. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to putting this to work on something. Maybe uh, scribing in some shower, onyx shower panels that we got to do coming up. Cool. Milwaukee didn't expect this solution. So love it. We're over here with drills and drivers. And first off, I had to switch my mic. The other one died on me. I didn't have it charged up fully. So hopefully this sounds good. You guys are probably thinking, dude, I don't need another drill. I don't need another uh, driver, an impact driver, whatever. Like it's the same thing, right? Milwaukee Fuel was introduced in 2012 and we're now on fourth generation. So this is the newest generation of impact. It's not a whole lot different. It's a little bit smaller, uh, same weight, same feel. But the thing is, you know, when you use a drill or an impact like we do, where we're putting 20,000 screws in a metal roof, incremental changes, small changes, they do make a difference and it is going to be advantageous to your productivity um, and it's going to drive like a better experience with the tool. Less time using the tool, less fatigue on your arms. So even though this isn't like a new track saw, like we just saw the track saw, awesome, like badass. I'm super pumped about it. I didn't need a new drill. The other thing that they've done is the auto stop. A lot of these other manufacturers are doing that. Milwaukee's now got that in here. A lot of stuff that they say that they're gonna be bringing into this space, a lot of machine learning and AI. Think about this, we're up on a, on a roof and we're doing metal fasteners. This drill, long-term, it's gonna be recognizing what I'm doing and it's gonna be getting better at optimizing the motor and the battery performance to drive those fasteners in the moment to get better. It's like mind blowing. Uh, that a tool company is looking at the actual AI, artificial intelligence, and the machine learning that these tools will be doing. So that's what they say we're gonna see in the future. Maybe that'll be fifth gen, sixth gen, but drill drivers, incremental performance, love it.
Now, I don't use a ton of M12, but they're now on Gen 3 of the M12 fuel. And dude, these things are super tiny. They're saying, well, not saying, I mean, this is a half inch shorter than the existing, and it has 30% more power as well. I don't know how those are measured. I just know that when I go ahead and use it on site, I'll let you guys know if it actually is a lot better. Uh, I do like the light though. That's something that I can see right away. It's kind of a big improvement over that light there. It's just never been a huge thing for us, but as they come out with more powerful tools, I would love to have a smaller tool in my pouch, hanging off my hip all day, less weight, once they get the power and the runtime up to something that is gonna work for us. So, I don't know, this just sounds like the right thing to do here. let that be someone else's problem. All right, so this is the M18 um, rivet gun, and we're just gonna do a quick quarter inch rivet. So nothing too crazy here. Um, there we go. This is something that you're gonna put a fastener on from like the finished side. You can see this, and it's, it does a good job, but this is another tool that they got. And this is a lock nut. Um, looks like the same type of tool, however, I've never seen this before. This is gonna be more for your heavy duty applications, trailers, fenders, something like that. And let's see if I can get this through this hole. You know, we'll just do this one right here. And so you've got two parts. This is gonna be your finished side. You see how nice that's gonna look on the outside? And we slide this piece over. And all in one smooth motion, this is going to pull that super tight. It's gonna make a nice clean cut but the advantage here is that that's gonna be completely sealed. So it's just another application where getting rid of having to do anything pneumatic on the job site or in the workshop, which we all know pneumatic tools are loud. Uh, so awesome, man. Milwaukee coming out with more niche tools. This is a surprise tool. Milwaukee's actually not talking about this here at the pipeline, but this is very important to me. This is an M12 nibbler. If you guys have watched the channel, you know what this is all about. Look at how good this fits in your hand versus the other competitor uh, tools out there that are in this space. A uh, quick, couple quick things, tool-free uh, movement. So if you wanna change where your die is positioned, boom, tighten this back up. We've got multiple speeds, which I'm just gonna always go probably on high speed. Uh, once again, M12, so you can put the bigger batteries in there. Um, I don't know if you're gonna need to, we're gonna and find you're out. one tonight at dinner. Cole said uh, he's gonna hook me up with one, but hey, check it out. Who cares what it looks like, feels like if it doesn't perform. Uh, we got some 26 gauge duct, which is got some pretty minor ribs. Let's go ahead and just make a quick cut. Oh, and you actually get an accessory bag, which I'll show you later when we get this thing on site. So all these metal shavings that you're gonna see, they'll get collected and not uh, end up in the bottom of your boots, because I promise that does happen. But let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Okay, there we go. Nice and quiet, very little vibration. You can see the, the bottom there. Right over those ribs, no problem. Dude. And it does a really good job. You can't really see that, but you're not gonna get cut as easily because of the way that it um, rolls the material over. I've been waiting for this uh, tool. I actually talked to Cole, the guy you just seen about four years ago, and he said, what tool do you want? I said, I want Milwaukee to make me a set of nibblers. This is the first nibbler that I know of on the market that is brushless. So long time, run time, uh, power is awesome. I'm stoked. So cool, dude. You do not want these to go into somebody's shoe. All right guys, so that was the first pipeline in person. Used to be MPS, is a little bit smaller, a little bit more focused, like not every, um, 
not every tool like line was here. It was more focused on what's coming out soon. What's more appropriate for guys like me, the carpentry, uh, the drill and driver, that sort of stuff. So maybe we'll be back. They're probably gonna be doing more than one pipeline a year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And um, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button down below, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, all that good stuff, man. Um, and be on the lookout for some of these tools coming in the future. And any questions, drop them down below and I can hopefully figure some of that information out if I missed it. Specs, pricing, availability, timeline. I'll do the best I can. All right, later guys.